This is the Coros Apex 2 and this is the Coros Apex 2 Pro. At the time of this recording, it's almost impossible to get hold of one of these. So let's find out why. Coros were nice enough to send me these review samples, but this video is not sponsored and I have to send these watches back. Let's talk about aesthetics. When I reviewed the Coros Pace 2, which if you haven't seen, I will link up here and down here, I was a big fan of its overall look with its minimal bezel and overall simple body design. I just wasn't a big fan of the graphics on the glass. I then reviewed the Vertex 2, and this does away with all those printed indicators on the glass in favor of minimal indicators on a chunkier, more rugged bezel. The Apex falls somewhere in the middle. The regular Apex looks more like a refined version of the Pace 2. Much like the Pace 2, it has a plain bezel, with branding still printed on the glass, but this time around, it's a little more subtle. The Pro, however, well, that's the sweet spot. I personally think it's the best looking Coros watch that I've tested to date. It has very subtle branding around the bezel and minimal printed graphics on the glass. And in this green color, oh, it just looks awesome. Bezels on both watches are made from a coated titanium, which will vary in color depending on the color of watch that you choose. The Pro version is available in three standard colors, which are gray, black, and this one green. There is also a special edition, but who knows how long you're gonna be able to get hold of one of those. The standard Apex also comes in three colors and they are black, coral, and this one, which is gray. The Apex 2 Pro has a 22 millimeter band, while the regular Apex has a 20 millimeter band. Both use the same quick release pins that you'll find on the Pace 2. If you do want a silicon band, you're gonna to have to buy that separately because all of the standard colors come with nylon bands. Personally, I like the nylon bands because they have an infinite adjustment, so you can cinch it up tight when you're gonna go and do an activity and you can loosen it off when you're wearing it casually. That said, they do take a little while to dry out when they get wet. The Pro, the bigger of the two watches, is 46.1 by 46.5 by 14 millimeters, which is not much bigger than the regular version, which is 43 by 42.8 by 12.8 millimeters. The difference in weight between the Pro and the regular Apex 2 is just 11 grams, being 53 grams at the top end when sporting the nylon band like I've got here, and 13 grams when you're using a silicon band. The heaviest configuration being 66 grams, so they're pretty light. The case itself is made from a mixture of titanium and fiber reinforced polymer. Neither of the models feel particularly bulky to me, and that's coming from someone who tends to pick the smaller device when given the option. But I've been happily rocking the bigger pro version with no issues. The Apex 2 and 2 Pro have now adopted the same control scheme that's featured on the Vertex 2, meaning it's moved to a three button layout from a two button layout, one of which being the rotating dial button combo. This means that you now have a dedicated backlight button at the top of the watch. This is something that I complained about in my Pace 2 review, so it's nice to see it added to the Apex 2 and 2 Pro. Although that said, I still find the backlight implementation a little bit frustrating. I've covered this at length in my Pace 2 review, so I'm not going to go over the same things here but suffice it to say i would still like a little bit more control over how the backlight function works having a dedicated button does go some way to solve some of those issues however you can also use this backlight button for quick access to some selected items the lower of the three buttons is the back or lap button so as the name may suggest, it will take you back out of menus and if you are running and you press it, it will act as a lap button. You can also use it to toggle through a few key metrics on your watch face and a long press will take you into the shortcuts menu. And again, in the Coros app, you can customize what actually appears in this menu. The dial is where you'll access your main menu and your settings. You can use the dial to scroll and select and it works just the same way as it does on any other Coros watch.
Display size on the Apex 2 Pro is 1.3 inches, with the regular Apex being a hair smaller at 1.2 inches. Resolution on the Pro is 260 by 260 and 240 by 240 on the regular Apex. Both watches feature a touchscreen always on memory LCD display, covered in sapphire glass, capable of displaying up to 64 colors. The touchscreen works in a very similar way to that of the bigger, more expensive Vertix 2, which is to say it's limited in functionality. In fact, it's kind of strange what the touchscreen will and won't allow you to do. Scrolling through menus, for instance, you can use the touchscreen for, but when you get to an item you want to select, you're going to have to use a button because the touchscreen won't allow you to select that item. You'll have a similar experience when it comes to scrolling through some of the metrics. You can get to them, you can scroll through them, but you can't select them. All of this adds up to a strange experience when using the touchscreen. Thankfully, there isn't really any need to use it most of the time. In fact, you can even turn it off. Well, that is for everything apart from maps and music control, but there'll be more on that a little bit later. I am on record as not always being a huge fan of touchscreen in running watches, but as it's limited to a few places, it's not a big deal. Other than pretty strange touchscreen behavior that you can pretty much ignore, the screen is very good. It's clear and easy to read in direct sunlight, but it's not gonna win over any Apple Watch users. I have no complaints about the accuracy of the GPS. I haven't seen any spurious lines and it seems to compare pretty well with my Garmin 245. Out of the box, the Apex 2 Pro had 75% battery. The first thing I did was take it out for a run. This lasted a little over 48 minutes and reduced the battery down to 69%. I also completed two further similar length runs and a 56 minute GPS cardio session. In total, this amounted to 3.3 hours of GPS tracking. I got a total of 16 days of regular use. This was including sleep tracking and step tracking and notifications turned on. At the end of day 16, I still had 5% remaining, which the watch said was still good for another two hours GPS tracking. At 2%, you are finally asked to recharge the watch. But remember, I got all of that, not even from a full charge. Battery life predictions do vary depending on what you have turned on and off, so I'm not gonna list them all here. Maximum all systems on GPS with dual frequency on the Pro is expected to get you 26 hours of tracking. But this won't be an option on the regular Apex 2 because it doesn't have dual frequency. So on that, the maximum you're gonna get on all systems on is 30 hours, which is awesome. If you intend to do this tracking with music as well, then those figures will drop to 11 hours and seven hours respectively. Suffice it to say that regardless of which model you've got, I don't think you're gonna to have to charge this watch very often. When you do come to charge it, from my testing, it will take around 40 minutes to get to 50%, it'll take around 75 minutes to get to 90%, and it will take 100 minutes to get to 100%. The Apex 2 is waterproof down to five atmospheres of pressure, regardless of which model you have. The Apex 2 has Bluetooth as in previous models, but as with the Vertix 2, has added Wi-Fi, but curiously removed Ant Plus. Following on from the Vertix 2, the Apex 2 is now the second Coros watch to add music playback. And just like the Vertix 2, it only works with offline music and not the kind that you can get from a streaming service, regardless of whether you've got a premium account or not. Music transfer is drag and drop from your Mac or PC and works exactly the same way as a thumb drive does. To listen to music, you will need to connect some sort of Bluetooth headphones because it doesn't have an internal speaker. Playback controls are also just as strange as they are on the Vertix 2, as they're a mixture of touchscreen controls and button controls. Not really a big deal if you're a set it and forget it runner, but if you like to change your tracks while you're running, then it can be a little bit fiddly. Both Apex 2s are able to control cameras from GoPro and Insta360, but it's going to depend on the model and they're mostly new ones and there's not very many so probably most people won't get much use out of this feature. The Apex 2 Pro has a total of 29 activities to choose from with the regular version having just one less at 28. The missing activity is the multi-pitch climb which was added recently. If you've watched my Vertix 2 review, then you'll be familiar with the metrics available to you here. 
because they're exactly the same. Calories burned, total activity time, steps, floors climbed, running performance, fatigue, recovery, heart rate, sleep, elevation gain, solar activity, HPA and body temperature. You can get additional information by clicking on them. Again, nothing we haven't seen before, but it's still very effective. Both models have offline maps in both landscape and topo, as well as a hybrid mode. Again, without wishing to sound like a broken record, this is exactly the same as it is on the Vertex 2. They come preloaded with global landscape maps, but you can also go to the Chorus website and download the topo maps if you wish. Navigation around the maps on the watch hasn't changed either, because that is done using the touchscreen for movement and zooming in and out using the digital dial. In my testing, sleep tracking performed very well. Bearing in mind I was asleep, as far as I can tell, it performed just as well as any of the other Coros watches I have tested. If you'd like to know more about what stats are actually tracked in the sleep tracking, then I will link a video up here and down here of the walkthrough of the Coros app. Smartwatch features are fairly limited. You get non-interactive notifications and you get call alerts. This means you can't actually accept the call on the watch and take the call on the watch. You can just know it's happening. So don't expect to be taking calls on this thing. With both the Apex 2 and 2 Pro, there have been significant price increases over the previous models. The 42mm version of the original Apex started at just £269 in the UK. The 46mm version started at just £299. There was also a Pro version which was £349. This time around, the regular Apex 2 starts at £419, with the price of the Pro version ranging from anywhere between £499 to to £549. With that said, the 2 and 2 Pro have had a significant increase in specs over the previous models, but if you are thinking of upgrading from one of those, then it may cost you a little bit more than you was expecting. The Coros Apex 2 and 2 Pro are very capable running watches that are nicely designed. I have especially enjoyed wearing the Pro version in this awesome green colour. If you are in the market for a new fully featured running watch, then you won't be disappointed by either model. And to be honest, there isn't a lot to choose between them. But if you are coming from one of the older models, then you may want to consider what the upgrade is actually worth to you. If you're coming from the original Apex Pro, for instance, then you're really talking about the addition of music and and satellite capabilities. And if that's worth it to you, then go for it. But just remember, you'll also lose a couple of features like Ant Plus and half of your water resistance depth. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Are you thinking of picking up either an Apex 2 or Apex 2 Pro? Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.